celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the liturgy of today, the Lord is reminding each one of us how essential it is to be watchful, to be prepared, to be searching, to be waiting for the coming of our God. A Christian life reminds each one of us we are, if we are unprepared, the Lord will close the door on our face. If we are prepared, the Lord will invite us joyfully into his kingdom. As we come before the Eucharistic table, let us thank the Lord for the wisdom that he gives us to be prepared. <laughs> Lord Jesus, you died and rose to bring us life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are our light in darkness. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are hope of resurrection. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Lord is to God in the highest and on Merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. 
She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be freed from care because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. 
Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with word of command, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then who we are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. According to Matthew. Lord, you, o Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now, five of them were foolish, five of them were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them. But the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there came a cry, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and for you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went away to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are already on the 32nd Sunday of the Ordinary Time. If you look into all three readings of today, the church 
gives us this appropriate readings reminding each one of us how watchful we need to be how prepared we must be and how essential are these to live a lively life in faith in the lord the first reading of today is speaking about wisdom when you seek wisdom the lord comes to embrace you in fullness but in his time he is always generous but we need to be prepared in his time not in my time there's a beautiful story about a young farm worker who goes to a farm they were looking for a worker to be hired and the farm owner is asking what are your qualifications the farm worker says i can sleep when the wind blows i can sleep when the wind blows though the farm owner does not understand the sentence but he liked the attitude of this young man and he hired him later on one or two months later there was a heavy wind thundering lightning and storm the farm owner and the wife got up from their bed to go and see whether everything secured in their farm as they were so agitated but they could not see this young work whom they have hired first they got out of their house they went to the farm they see the shutter is properly shut down and well locked they went to the firewood so that they can carry them to their fireplace and they see sufficient locks are being placed near the fireplace well secured they go to the barn to see where there is the straw that has been secured from the rain and the wind and they see it is all completely covered and tied down nothing can move them and they look for the tractor whether it is out there or inside the tractor place and they see the tractor is inside and the shutter is put, put down and they see their livestock they are all well tied they have sufficient straw in their places and they are not frightened at all well secured and they see the hens they are also completely secured then this man understand understood what that young man told i can sleep when the wind blows they go to see this man he is fast asleep he has prepared everything ahead of time brothers and sisters in christ the lord is telling very specially the author of the book of wisdom 100 years before the birth of jesus in alexandria the jews who have moved to alexandria being envied about the wisdom that they possess the author is telling them don't be envious about their wisdom learn from them how wise you need to be the second reading of today saint paul probably it might have been the first letter that saint paul wrote 
St. Paul, along with the early Christians, believed that while they were alive, the parousia, the second coming of the Lord, is going to be. But disappointing that some of them have already died. Some of them, they quit their job. And they're waiting for the second coming of the Lord, which is not happening. But St. Paul, it awakened in him and he said to them, Brothers and sisters, if the second coming of the Lord is being delayed, don't be afraid. Have hope. Don't be like those people who do not have hope. What is essential in our life is the Spirit of the Lord. If we have lived a worthy life, the Lord has died even for those people who have gone before us. When the Lord comes, what he needs from each one of us is how prepared we are. The gospel of today telling us two important things. First is, it is an individual preparedness. And it is also the universal preparedness. First and primarily, it is meant for the chosen generation. When the Messiah came, he came for the chosen people. The disappointing thing is, the chosen people have disowned the Lord. And he came for the universal people. That is for each one of us, then the Gentiles, you and me today, who are, listen, who are listening, who are participating. And he came for each one of us. If we are prepared, and definitely the Lord welcomes each one of us. Those five maids were wise who have welcomed the bridegroom that indicate to each one of us we need to have our lamps lit and it has to be full of oil which is also a reminder that this cannot be borrowed at the last hour. The oil is the wisdom that comes from the Lord, the Holy Spirit that has been bestowed upon each one of us. Second, the grace that God has given to each one of us from the very moment of our baptism and all the other sacrament that we have received, time to time God gives us the unmerited grace into our lives. When he gives us these graces, we also need to be vigilant. We need to be productive people, not unproductive people, productive people. We cannot say that tomorrow or two months later or eight years later, I will prepare myself for the second coming of God. When I am vigilant and be prepared, and when I am searching and watchful, the Lord is going to tell me, here comes the bridegroom. Trim your lamb. Lit it. May the oil be full. The grace of God is being, being poured into our lives. So that is demanding each one of us, we need to be humble, we need to be faithful, we need to be kind, we need to be generous, we need to be forgiving, and we also need to be always available for the needs and the wishes of the people who call on us. When we are prepared, the Lord is going to welcome each one of us into his kingdom. The beauty is, when God comes to call each one of us, he is going to lead us to the heavenly home. When I am unprepared, that time he is not going to be merciful at all. 
So the grace is given to each one of us equally, according to our ability, according to our capabilities. If we are not productive, then we cannot borrow it in the last hour. And when we are productive at the time that God has given to each one of us, then we are going to be the most happiest people. Because what awaits for us is greater than what is being present to us today. What is being present to us today is the grace and the sacraments. The Holy Eucharist gives us all the necessary grace that we need. And we need to be also not just to depend on the Holy Mass alone, weekly Mass alone. What God is telling us through the Gospel of today is, at every circumstances of my life, I need to be prepared. Every moment of my life, I must value what God gives to me. Every moment of my life, my spirit has to be capitalized with God's grace that comes to me. At every moment of my life, I must discipline in the way that God wants me to be. If I have not disciplined, if that man in the story I told, if he has not disciplined, he cannot sleep when the wind blows. He has disciplined. He has prepared himself very well. He, did, he knew when it is going to be hard at time. And he has been prepared for every eventuality that is going to be coming. So we have to be prepared for every eventuality. And when the eventuality comes, it is going to be greater. There was this particular young lady who was terminally ill. And the doctors told her she is not going to last for more than six months. And she called the pastor of her parish, told him, this is my situation. I want my funeral to be arranged in such a way. I don't want to wait for the last minute. And she says, these are the hymns. These are the readings. This would be the garment that we placed on my funeral. And I want everything to be properly arranged. And the priest was so happy. As he was about to leave, he, she says, said to him, Father, one more thing, the most important thing. When you bury me, you must keep a fork in my right hand and bury me along with the fork in my right hand. Why fork in your right hand? This is what I learned from my grandmother. When there used to be potluck in my parish, in a fellowship meal, each one of us called to bring one particular dish. And then, as the dishes, the main dishes are getting over, somebody besides me would always tell me, Keep your fork. There is something greater coming. Maybe a chocolate cake or an apple pie. And I would preserve my fork. Because I am ready, I don't wait for something else to be given to me. I have in my hand. The parousia that is coming is something greater. If we are prepared to meet the Lord, the Lord is going to tell me, well done, faithful and good servant, enter into the kingdom of my, kingdom of my Father. As we partake in this Holy Eucharist today, brothers and sisters, let us always be watchful, wakeful, be prepared, which is, which is very essential for us to enter into the kingdom of God was prepared the right thing, the good thing for each one of us.
Let's all join together and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not to made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we stand around the Eucharistic table, let us present to the Lord all our praise and petitions. For church leaders, may God draw them ever closer to himself in their mission of spreading the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may God give them the grace to work toward peace among nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are on the fringes of society, may the Lord provide for the acceptance and help that they need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this faith community engaged in educating young people, may the Lord bless their services and dedication. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they feast forever at the heavenly table of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our intentions for today, John Tracy, a birthday remembrance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. now for a swift end to the coronavirus pandemic that afflicts our world, that our God and Father will heal the sick, strengthen those who care for them, and help all of us to persevere in our faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and merciful God, source of all life, health, and healing, look with compassion on our world brought low by disease. Protect us in the midst of the grave challenges that continue to assail us in your fatherly providence, we pray. Grant recovery to the stricken, strength to those who care for them, success to those working to eradicate the scourge. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Streams of living water. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, set the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, O Lord, we pray, upon the sacrificial offerings offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with a loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as a church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you. And with the joy we proclaim. upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was sended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life from the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have all this worth which be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Allen, his assistant bishops, all the clergy, the religious, the entire people your son has gained for you. We ask you, Father, to hear the prayers of the family who have gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children wherever they may be. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her blessed spouse Joseph, with the blessed apostles, St. Patrick, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. Yes, we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with the will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should end under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us everlasting life.
spiritual communion my Jesus I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you Never permit me to be separated from you, amen. The Memorari, remember most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. In spite of this confidence, I fly unto the Virgin of Virgins, my mother, to thee do I come. 
before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions. In thy mercy, hear and answer me. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the masses indeed. Thanks. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, alleluia. Glory, glory, alleluia. Glory, glory, alleluia. His truth is marching on. I have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. They have builded him an altar in the evening dews and damps. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. His day is marching on. Glory, glory, alleluia. Glory, glory, alleluia. Glory, glory, alleluia. His truth Marching on, he has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of all before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet are calm. 